another ad that starts with TikTok made me buy it, I'm gonna lose it. Is there some secret formula for making high performing creatives that convert? Let's skip the long intros and get right to the good stuff. In this video, you're going to learn how to produce powerful hooks for your Facebook and TikTok ads based on the exact framework that we use with our seven and eight figure clients to help them scale. By the way, if I'm talking too slow, please feel free to watch this at 1.5 or even 2x speed. And I hope you're ready to take notes because we're not gonna waste any time today. There is a formula for making show stopping ad creatives. We use a proven principle in my agency called ADA, which stands for attention, interest, desire, and action. Today we'll be covering attention. I shouldn't even have to say this, but if your ads are not even grabbing attention, you might as well be throwing your money out the window. If you're seeing low click-through rates and high cost per click, improving your hook makes a massive difference. But more importantly, a strong hook generally leads to a higher ROAS and lower cost per result. Think of your ad hook like your profile photo on a dating app. A great photo means people might consider going on a date with you, but a bad photo means you're getting swipes left all day, every day. Immediately wow. now. Immediately now. You might as well not be in the dating pool, which sadly <laughs> is most ads these days. So don't waste money making awful ads because then you're just overpaying for impressions that never view your content. So what makes a great hook? I boiled it down to six main categories for you and I can guarantee you all hooks will fall into one of these six categories. Shocking or extreme, relatable statements, a question, the pattern interrupt, the negative hook, and declaration. So I'll explain each one, show you an example, and then we'll break down why it works. After spending millions of dollars testing different creative hooks, we found that the more extreme the opinion, the higher the hook rate. Like imagine you're walking down the street and you see a giant unicorn riding a skateboard. You'd probably stop and stare, right? That's because our brains are hardwired to pay attention to things that are out of the ordinary or unexpected. It's the same thing with your ads. If you want a total stranger to pay attention, you need to do something that's gonna surprise or shock them. Considering most ads these days are are boring, mm -hmm. adding shock value wakes people up and ensures your ad stands out from the competition. So let's look at an example from no other than the king of YouTube, Mr. Beast. I'm on top of a mountain in Antarctica. Look at that view. But you know what's an even better view? This Fusel's bar. Fusel's.com, you should go buy it. Like seriously, they taste amazing. Of course, leave it to Mr. Beast to take things to the extreme by climbing a mountain in Antarctica of all places. But let's break down why this works. If I saw this video in my feed, it would 1 million percent get my attention. Sure, it's Mr. Beast, but how often do you see an ad where someone's in a freezing Arctic tundra? It's unexpected. It's definitely out of the ordinary. Shock value, check. And then he wastes no time by plugging his own chocolate bar. Needless to say, not only do his YouTube videos destroy everyone else's, but now he's taking over paid social. Can't even hate, he's absolutely killing the game. But here's how I would make this better. If I were running ads for Feastables, Mr. Beast, hit me up. I'd say something like, I risked my life climbing a frozen mountain in Antarctica just for a chocolate bar. Or better yet, I almost lost my limbs scaling an icy mountain for this taste of a chocolate bar. Okay, I'm getting a little bit carried away here, but you get the idea. Obviously not all of us can scale a 16,000 foot summit in the South Pole, but what you're going for here is shock value. Relatable statements. We love using these with our clients because they serve as qualifiers. I'm sure you've heard by now that these days your creatives do the targeting. Well, I'm gonna tell you what this really means. That's just another way of saying your creatives filter out your customers from people who will never buy from you. A relatable statement is something people can identify with or relate to, hence the term relatable statements. An example would be, I've tried everything, but I just can't scale my Facebook ads. That's probably a statement that some of you can relate to. It speaks to a shared experience and a common pain point of trying to scale your ads. Therefore, only the people who have run Facebook ads and try to scale will stop and pay attention to this. With this, you've effectively weeded out all the people whom this does not apply to. You've qualified your audience in your creative to ensure that only people with prior experience running ads on Facebook are paying attention. And that is extremely powerful. So how do you come up with great relatable statements? You wanna be specific, mention shared experiences, and highlight your audience's biggest pain. Salespeople use this tactic all the time because it works incredibly well. 
By using relatable statements, you'll get the attention of your ideal customer because you've said something that resonates with them. And similarly, people who don't qualify will just skip over your hook because it's not relevant to them. When my man started experiencing ED symptoms a few months ago, he dreaded that trip to the pharmacy. Okay, I'm pushing the envelope here with this example, but hey, if it sells, it sells. I'm not one to argue with the data. So why this works? It touches upon a very specific pain point among men. Check. If you're someone who has experienced ED, you will immediately pick up on the reference. Shared experience? Check. It also digs into the audience's biggest pain point in a specific problem, which is that they've tried everything else without any success. Specific? Check. By the way, this ad has been running for over 30 days. Obviously, it's working. Now, if I were running the ads for Hims, here's how I would make it better. Introduce the video with a long, twistable balloon starting to inflate, then quickly deflating. Really push the boundaries and make it even more suggestive. Sex sells, so they should 100% take advantage of that. To be honest, their intro sucks and it's super boring. They could even show other objects like a baby carrot or a cucumber, which is an obvious choice. So many missed opportunities here when they could be a lot more creative with the visual. We actually had a client that was struggling to scale their ads and it was very obvious that this was because they were severely lacking in the creative department. But after applying our creative testing framework and basically overhauling their campaigns, within three months they went from hemorrhaging cash to quadrupling their ad spend and increasing profits. If you want results like this, book a call and we'll help you scale. In fact, if you don't see better performance in the first 90 days, we work for free. Ask a question. Let me ask you, why are you watching this video right now? I'm willing to bet money that you've already thought of an answer. It's probably so you can learn how to create better ads or because you want to stay up to date with the latest creative strategies. Was that creepy? Maybe, but it's not because I can read your mind. It's just how our brains work. When we're asked a question, our brains can't help but find an answer. That's why question hooks are so effective because they appeal to human psychology and how we process information. When you ask a question about something your audience really cares about, they're more likely to keep watching. That's why questions like looking to renovate your home or struggling to eat healthy in ad copy work so well. They're simple yet powerful because they immediately address people in those situations. What's more, a good question will make people feel like you understand them. And I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Customers will buy from you when they feel like they're understood. Hi, I'm sorry. What do you think is the best decorating hat? Um, honestly, mix styles. Why this works. This question immediately grabs the attention of someone who is looking to decorate. Admittedly, decorating your space and making it actually look nice is pretty hard to do. So framing it as a hack automatically gets people curious. But here's how I would make it even better. I'd say, what is the ultimate decorating hack to make it even more powerful? Best is a weak word and overused. Remember, we want to be extreme here. And I know they staged this to look like an organic interaction, but they should add a title like 10 times award-winning interior designer to create authority and add credibility. Because for all we know, this person isn't nobody. Why would you take advice from a complete stranger? The concept has potential, but it's weak at best pattern interrupt. A pattern interrupt is when you break the mindless scrolling by taking people by surprise. You can do this in many ways. Unusual visuals, bold and contrasting colors, sound effects, adding humor, or fast cuts. Either way, the goal is to interrupt the pattern in the feed with something totally unexpected or totally out of the ordinary that you wouldn't typically see. I know I'm going to regret saying this because this is something that is working so insanely well right now that I want to gatekeep it for our clients. <sighs> but it's split screens. You can fight me on this, but I think split screens are a great example of a pattern interrupt, and I'm seeing them pop up everywhere. Here's an example from Dollar Shave Club. That's why I signed up for Dollar Shave Club. Why this works. People don't expect to see a split screen in their feeds, so this does a phenomenal job of stopping the scroll. They're qualifying viewers with a simple question that gets straight to the point. But here's how I would make this better. The color scheme in both videos is very similar, so I'd use contrasting colors to really make this pop and stand out even more. I'd also try a close-up shot of ingrown hairs in one of the videos because people can't help but look at extreme close-ups. This 
piques curiosity and keeps people watching. FYI, this ad has been running for over 20 days. Needless to say, if you haven't tried split screens yet, you better hop on this trend fast because it's becoming more and more mainstream by the day. Don't say I didn't warn you. But here's another example of an ad that's not a split screen. <laughs> When I saw this thumbnail, I had to click on it. A Twinkie roll being used as a hair curler? Absolutely f genius. Another great example of how close-up shots grab attention and objects being used in an unexpected way. Of course, MailChimp has absolutely nothing to do with Twinkies, but if their goal was to get me to stop scrolling, they succeeded. Bravo MailChimp, well done. The negative hook. This is something I don't see enough brands doing. It's when you present a negative opinion instead of a positive one. But the trick is to actually turn it into a positive. Here's an example. I don't like going out. Now I have a reason to stop wasting my time at the nail salon and can do my nails in five minutes at home. I wore these nails for two weeks and they didn't budge and my nails have never been healthier. Thanks a lot, Glenmedic. Why this works. We're not used to seeing it negative hooks. Most ads are praising and extremely complimentary of the brand and that's cliche and played out. Not to mention negativity sells. That's why every time you turn on the news, they're always reporting on something negative and rarely ever covering the great things happening around the world because negative headlines get clicks and views. But notice how her saying, I don't like Glenmedic was actually a positive because it has helped her save time and money. Those are obvious benefits. So when using a negative hook, turn it into positives with how your brand makes people's lives better. When done right, these ads convert like crazy. So here's how I would make this better. The intro is boring, so I would take the clip where she's viciously tapping on her keyboard and make that the intro instead. The fast movement in that clip is way more eye-catching. By the way, this ad has been running for over 25 days. Take advantage of negative hooks because honestly, not enough brands are doing them and they are great at handling customer objections. Declarations. Honestly, these are my least favorite because they are boring and lack creativity. You know the ones I I mean, the ads that start with this product does this, or I can't believe XYZ, or worse yet, TikTok made me buy it. If I see another ad that starts with TikTok made me buy it, I'm gonna lose it. Here's what I mean. My new favorite bag fits everything I need and I love it. I got this chic little tote bag from Dooney and Burke in the Greta pattern. It's the best per- Okay, stop. I can't watch anymore. I am tired of seeing these. Personally, these types of ads are overused and kind of cringe to watch. But the purpose of using declarations is to make a bold claim. They're meant to spark curiosity and create anticipation so you keep watching, which is what they're trying to do here and failing miserably because it honestly just comes off as trying too hard. I'm not even gonna talk about how I'd make this better because it's such a disaster. This isn't to say that declarations don't work. Many do very well, but push the boundaries if you can because creative hooks ultimately pay off in more conversions. All in all, hooks are just scratching the surface and just one piece of the puzzle when it comes to creating killer ads. If you want help creating show-stopping creatives like these, click the first link in the description box below and we'll help you scale. Here's the thing. Once you've gotten their attention, the hard part is actually keeping them watching, which is is the real challenge. In my next video, I'll break down exactly how to do that step by step. In the meantime, things are changing fast. So make sure you're up to date on what's working right now on the platform. If you haven't watched my latest video, I cover all the basics you need that go hand in hand with creating awesome hooks. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.